Thank you. So my name's Dr. Hugh Mendelshaw, and I'm a GP in Toowoomba. And uh, yeah, this afternoon I'd like to share some of my thoughts and my uh, yeah, thoughts around palliative care and general practice when it comes to the to the whole concept of home deaths. Uh, home deaths is an interesting and maybe a bit of a, a an emotional concept. Uh, and I guess 30 years experience has I've done many home deaths over the 30 years. And however, what I've also discovered is that my registrars and my junior doctors within the practice here are quite uh, reluctant, even frightened, of the concept of a home death. And so I guess I want to just uh, debunk that a little bit and, and just uh, uh, explain why I see home deaths as a very valid part of general practice. So maybe just a little bit of my own history with that here in Toowoomba, a, a sort of largish provincial centre in Queensland. So when I started in general practice about 25, 30 years ago, uh, yeah, we did a significant number of, of home deaths. In fact, uh, I, I remember my, uh, when I did my exam and my, got my qualifications as a GP, my assignment or my long case that I had to write up, you know, this thousand words on a particular patient, was actually a home death that I did as a registrar. Um, what do I mean by the term home deaths? Maybe I should just define that. And fundamentally, that's, that's basically where one takes a palliative patient right through the terminal phase so that they die in the home. Uh, and that's basically what I mean by the home death and, and what, how we manage that as GPs and how we sit around that process. So what I observed then over the, over the years is that we, we very nicely, and it's a wonderful facility, got a hospice uh, facility here within Toowoomba, and once that happened, the number of home deaths that I and my fellow GPs were doing dropped off dramatically. And over the last three to four years, we've got a palliative care physician and my home deaths have dropped off even further. I will say that I have had this discussion and this whole con conversation around home deaths with, with our palliative care physician, who's really good. And he totally supports the general practice involvement in, in palliative care and general practice involvement and, and the, the idea of a home death. I see a home death as, a, as an amazing gift that the family can give to a patient to say, okay, we're going into the palliative phase and, you know, it's a bit like, it's a, bit like a birthing plan. You, you, you know that you, you have these thoughts and these dreams and these ideas about how you want the birth to go, but as doctors we know that we've always got to have contingencies and warn the, warn the lady that, hey, if things go bad, a season might be necessary and let's, let's not feel bad about that. And the same with home deaths, we plan it and we think about it and we talk about it. But we still put in the proviso that if things go bad or difficult, we can, we can admit. We've, we've got that safety net, we can admit to the hospice or to the hospital. Let's not feel bad about that. But having said that, it's an amazing gift that, that a family can, can give to, 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 their, to their loved one, a last gift. Um, it's a thing that we as GPs, I think, I actively... Um, talk about it with my patients as, as a viable option so and I, I do that with a with a sense of confidence and that's in part because I feel confident about the process but even if you're a junior GP and don't feel confident I would I would suggest that you put on a bravado of confidence about it and say look to the patient I say look I've done this before I've walked through this process with many people before and I'm happy to walk through it with you and take you through this process of of letting your loved one die in their own bed, in their own home, with the cat tucked up on the, on the bed. So I think that there are, however, a few um, points of advice that I would give to, to make it so that it's going to be successful. And one of my provisos is quite, quite sort of selfish, I guess, and that is that the patient's home has got to be relatively near either my home or the, or the surgery or the, the, the drive from, from home to surgery. Uh, home deaths are intensive. Home deaths in, towards the end of that last week could easily involve two visits a day by the doctor, three visits a day by the blue care or the, the domiciliary nurses. So home deaths are intensive and, and as a GP we've got to be ready for that. I, I would almost always give them my mobile number, certainly obviously the backup number of the after hours service. Uh, I would, 
in a group practice, I would probably talk to one of the other GPs, certainly if I'm going away or something like that, so that there's somebody covering that situation. Uh, and it's always good, I find it's good to get a registrar involved, and they can cover me as well as, as learn from the whole process. So the other big, big, big proviso that I talk to the family about is that I think that they really uh, need to have two dedicated family members who are prepared to do this. So if there's one dedicated family member, really exhaustion is going to set in and it's, it's going to not, if not fall over, but it's going to need a respite of mission at some stage through the process and it's going to be harder work. I, obviously the ideal is if there's three or four family members who are dedicated, who can take it on roster and say yes, for that last two weeks they will stop work, they will move to town, they will uh, move in with, into the house or take turns to be in the house overnight, maybe live with a friend or family or, or whatever for, for, the, for the interim so that they can get away from the situation and get some rest, some genuine rest. But they will take it in turns in the roster system to be with this person day and night and to look after them. Obviously we mobilise all the things that we normally do around uh, domiciliary nurses, syringe drivers, uh, palliative care teams, um, equipment, commodes, hospital style beds, wheelchairs, and, and in, certainly here in Toowoomba I can mobilise all of that very easily and very quickly and get a whole team around the process. We go for a home chart so that we can communicate. So we do all those technical things, but I guess the, the um, idea that I wanted to remind my colleagues of is don't be afraid of home deaths. Don't be afraid to be the team leader. It is, it is general practice at its best. Uh, thank you.